What improvements do you do to your home to increase the value? Hi, Kirk. Hi, Dwayne. So thank you for another episode in your series of 60 Lessons in 60 Years. So today, I'd like to discuss the ever-important lesson, what improvements will sell a home faster and for more money? So in over 60 years of selling real estate, I'm sure this is a question that you get asked often. Yeah, we do all the time, all mm -hmm. the time. Probably the biggest question we get asked is, what should we do? And so what we tell people is the, the three or four biggest things are make sure the paint is good, make sure that the um, curb appeal is good. So put some mulch in the flower beds, get rid of the weeds. Also, if your carpet's worn out, put some new carpet in. All those things get your dollars back. We had one the other day that had the paddle fan. It was supposed to have four blades. It only had three. Take the paddle fan down. So okay. people think if there's deferred maintenance like that, I wonder what's behind the walls. I wonder what we don't see. So those, those are some of the three or four of the quickest things. Yeah, and studies show that a new roof, a new AC unit, those are going, you're gonna see fewer days on the market when you have those items versus a home where those items are at the end of its useful life. Well, how much return do you typically see on some of those improvements? Well, I mean, we see some homeowners that do improvements that are specific to their enjoyment of the property and they're not gonna receive any value for that. But however, if they do like kitchens, floorings, baths, like those are the, the wow improvements that um, you'll find the most return or most bang for your buck. Yeah, and, and also I would say, you know, if, if you're looking at knocking a wall down, let us come out and look at it. I mean, the most important thing is if you can open the house up, people like houses that are open up. That's, that's the, the trend right now. But sometimes people take too many walls out. Sometimes they put the wrong type of flooring in. Call us, let us come out and look at it. We're going to give you ideas. They're going to give you the most bang for your buck. Well, what about a pool? Would you consider a pool a good, a good ROI? So in certain, yeah, so in certain um, price categories, absolutely. So in a, with a home price between 500 and 700, a yeah. pool is expected. Uh, everybody wants a pool. So um, if the property doesn't have a pool, they're, they're either not gonna look at it, they're just gonna buy a house with a pool, um, especially in a low interest rate environment, mm -hmm. because it's cheaper for them to, money's cheap, so they can finance the home with the pool rather than come out of pocket with dollars to put a pool in. The caveat though is when you put the pool in, put in something basic. So if you're gonna put a pool in, put a basic pool in. You know, I had a neighbor that put a $180,000 pool in. <laughs> you're not gonna see the value. You'll never get your value back on that. So put a $40,000 pool in. If somebody wants the LED lighting, if they want the hot tub, if they want the, the, um, the just, salt, just, the salt. Be, just yeah, be careful just with the improvements. Be very careful yeah. with the improvements. Put something simple in that's nice, but now it categorizes as a pool home. Okay. Well, do you have any examples of where some improvements have helped sell a home? Any of your experience? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we have one. We have one on Bahama. We sold recently. We took. Um, we we knocked out the wall. There was when you walked into the house, it had the living room on the left, had the the dining room straight ahead, and a kitchen on the on the left. But it was all compartmentalized. We knocked out one wall. It had a what, three inch um, step down. People mm -hmm. don't like the step down. We filled it with $2,000 worth of concrete. We put all new flooring down, put a uh, uh, bar kitchen in, in the house and the house sold for $10,000 more than the appraisal. Okay. And that was a super, super simple. I mean, it took two to three weeks to do all this work. Mm -hmm. Okay, last question for you. Are there different improvements for a traditional home seller versus a flipper? Yeah, I mean, a, a flipper, you want to find something where the margins are so good that you can take it down to the studs and do everything. Basically make it a new home. Um, I mean, like I always say, we're in the HGTV generation. Mm -hmm. So you want something, they're going to do something, take it down to the studs, create a wow factor, uh, and make sure that the margins work with all the work that they need to do. Whereas a homeowner, I mean, it's, yeah. it's basically just getting, re getting it ready for sale. It's putting some lipstick on it. So mm -hmm. for instance, when we flip property, we go in and we look at something and say, okay, what do we have to do? Sometimes we have to replace windows. Sometimes we have to put new roofs on. If the roof it, at the end of the life expectancy, you know, we go in and we just literally take it, like you said, take it down to the studs. So we're going to make sure we get our biggest bang for our buck. If you're a seller living there, all you're looking at doing is, like I said earlier, just put some paint, put some, put some, yeah. um, some lipstick. carpet, put lipstick on it. Yeah. You don't want to open up a Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. That's great information. And I know it'll help the public when preparing their home to sell. Thank you very much. So next week, I want you to come watch us next week because next week we're going to talk about um, common mistakes with portability and your homestead. <laughs>